Manchester City are unbeaten at home since Brian Horton took up the reins in succession to Peter Reid. But let me just tell you about Manchester United. If you think that their class is sometimes over-exaggerated, their last 20 league games, they've won 18, drawn one and lost one, 55 points out of 60. Takes your breath away, Andy. Oh, it's ridiculous, Mark. <laughs> Underway at Main Road with both teams coming from recent games when they haven't done themselves justice. Bruce came in briskly and then found Barry Flickcroft carrying him. Wasn't a greatest ball from Flickcroft into David White, though, didn't really give the striker as he is today a chance to get hold of it. One by Edgehill. White trying to whip it in behind Gary Pallister, who picked it off rather easily. Pallister, as you would expect, keeping close to Niall Quinn. Size for size, that's the best option that Manchester United have. It does mean at the moment that he's on the right-hand side of Steve Bruce, which isn't always the case. Glanced on by Sharp. City just settling to their shape as Coton kicked. Picked on well, first of all by Quinn, then by Freeland. But Sheeran couldn't capitalise on that. Tanchelskis. And Terry Freeland had gone forward then and was nowhere near Kanchelskis as Manchester United tried to pick up the tempo. That's what Keith Carl's here for. That's why he's the spare man that allows Terry Fulham. He's again there. He's the furthest man up field. Terry Fulham past Niall Quinn. Bruce. Now Parker. It's a great run by Keane. His trademark really fuses in the middle. And this is it. And so too does Sharp. And City breathe a sigh of relief. Gary Flickcroft breathes a sigh of relief, Mark. He's responsible for, he's trying to play offside, he's a midfield player. But if, if ever you want to dissect two players, it's exactly what happens. It's half a yard behind Hughes and half a yard in front of Sharp. Well, actually couldn't have fallen worse for Manchester United. Split the players perfectly. Roy Keane. Bruce. Hughes. here of just under 40,000 officially 5,500 tickets from Manchester United but you'd have a little bet that there might be more supporting them Ince with an unusual stray one Pills for handball by Bruce has been given White is trying to thread it through to Quinn and now they go for perhaps a more conventional set play. It looks like it's going to go very straight. <laughs> Not to Quinn. But, uh, in the end, it was met quite solidly by Bonk. Turn ahead this time. Quinn trying to turn. Flip cross. in the up-and-coming category. Well, it's dropped for Richard Edgehill to in the centre of the city. Sheeran and Sealand. And it is a corner, although Manchester United aren't very happy about that in the shape of Schmeichel. I don't understand what his problem is. Peter Schmeichel, I'm not sure what he's complaining about there. Well, he's thinking he's offside. There's certainly no signs of it there. Edgehill doing exactly what his manager wants and pushing forward as far as he wants to do. And certainly a corner. But Sheeran will take. He comes and then goes back. United have coped. McMahon. Curl was down for a moment. A bit of wrestling going on on the edge of the area. And now 
the referee has a good look at more contact between Keane and Schmeichel. <laughs> In terms of being a Mr. Angry, he's a good successor to Les Sealy, Peter Schmeichel. Oh, and, he, and he's a big lad as well. Hey, and why not for Roy Keane there? He's knocked the big man down. <laughs> Roy Keane, the former amateur boxer. <laughs> Alex Ferguson absolutely determined that his team won't suffer the slump that Leeds United suffered a year ago and Arsenal the year before that when they fell out of Europe prior to the Champions League situation. A great prize in itself was thanks from the players. Well, they were responsible for it really, particularly in the first leg against Galatasaray. Hardly credit when they were two up so early that we'll be talking them about them two weeks later. He's not being in the competition anymore. Michael's kick. And City just couldn't get to the ball quick enough. Ince was the main reason for that. And then Flipcroft catches it. Peter Schmeichel is back at place. <laughs> Just about. But he's normally dealt with things like that. Peter Schmeichel very well all season. But that, one of the poorest. But look at this. If anyone's wondering about commitment in local derbies, look at these two. Flying into each other. Flying now is Lee Sharp. Kanchelskis. Keen behind him. Hit it very well indeed. From a tight angle. Pumped it into the chest of Tony Coton. Oh, that was a wonderful strike. Arrives at him in the half volley just as he would have wanted it. And he doesn't disappoint, he really doesn't. It's a tight angle. It's always going to be difficult to score, but he does what he should do. And that sets the target. Look at the pace it is. Court can't hold on to it. It was the curl on the cross that deceived Kanchelskis, who had gone in well at the far post and then found the ball just veering behind him. Just wonder if anyone noticed a little tug on Andre Kanchelskis' his shirt at the top of the screen mark from Terry Feeling as he was going into the box. Shearer, space for City here, but not for long. Thanks for United to Lee Sharp. Owens ball, and Keane has caught them out again. And Coton protected the goal. And the warning signs are out. Roy Keane has staked his claim here. Well, if you're playing a sweeper, Martin, You've got to be prepared for this, and he's got to be there. At first I thought Tony Cotton made the wrong decision and went back towards his goal. But the goalkeeper proves he was right. Makes a fine save. Now, the scurrying of, of Terry Phelan. David White. Applauding the service. It was Dennis Irwin who found himself having to watch White. Obviously not as tall. And not close enough to stop the header. I just wonder, could he have taken on his chest, Martin? I may be doing him a, a disservice here. As it comes in, it is a little bit high. And heading, certainly from 18 yards, not one of David White's strong points. I think he showed that quite clearly there. But it's a good positive break from Terry Feeling. Hughes. Sharp was coming inside edge here, which was a good position, but the ball wasn't played where he wanted it. Now he reclaims it for the cross. It's... Good work again from Keane, who's revelling in his first case of an occasion like this. Sheeran, right to the right, Quinn to his left. Phelan making up some ground. Sheeran still on the ball, and Quinn comes in and plants another header past Peter Schmeichel and scores for the third derby in a row. And Manchester City have drawn first blood here at Main Road. It's a fabulous break from penalty box to penalty box. And just when I was wondering, does he know what he's going to do with the cross? Because Quinn had pulled wonderfully onto Parker. Couldn't have asked for a better scenario there. Look at that. He pulls onto the smallest Manchester United player. The cross is inch perfect. And Niall Quinn doesn't often miss those. Well, Peter Schmeichel must be sick at the sight of Niall Quinn. Because not only is he... Scoring past him at will, it seems, in these Manchester derbies. He also scored for the Republic of Ireland against Denmark last season as well. And Quinn's latest effort at Schmeichel's expense means it's Manchester City 1, Manchester United 0. We're halfway through the first half. 
And a pat on the back for Brian Horton, playing Mike Sheeran in that position where he found space and was able to move on and find the cross converted by Quinn. Well, the adventurism get punished in Manchester United. It's totally emptied the midfield area. Every, the whole, whole four of them up and ahead of the ball. It broke down at the edge of the box and Sheeran was off on a 60, 70, 80 yard run that finished in a wonderful cross and a super header from Niall Quinn. Well, we know all about the class of United. Now we're going to find something out about the character. And they've shown us already this season, and they showed us many times last season that they can go down in a game, but they've got the ability and the determination to get back into games. And when they came here last season, they also went behind to a Niall Quinn header. It finished 1-1, Cantona equalised, but Quinn is away again here. Stopped by the feet of Schmeichel, Sheeran following in. Phelan doing likewise. Knocked out by Pallister. Flick cross. Edge Hill. Schmeichel comes this time. Just has the room to reassert some authority in his penalty area against Quinn. Well, it's ultimate mate Sheeran and Martin. And he has got that little bit of space. But what he's done already is used that to greater advantage than when we watched Paul Nelson play that same role at Old Trafford recently. Here's Hughes. Head off from a long way out by Keith. White. Chasing. <laughs> Steve Bruce has said to Michael, that's yours. And David White, who is by no means a dirty player, had a sight of the ball there, and he will feel totally justified for going for it. Well, you can see that he's totally justified because he's not going for the goalkeeper at all, and that's why he didn't make contact with the goalkeeper. He saw the ball, he had a glimpse of it, he went for it, the goalkeeper beat him to it. No harm done. There's no offside. I'd like to have had David White perhaps in that position, but Quinn keeping it going. Into play with Sheeran. It's McMahon trying to steer it. It wasn't just power, there was a priority of placement there. Looking wide to Schmeichel's left. Not quite wide enough. A oh, great pick from Quinn though. When everyone's expecting it to be in the box, go away. Here's Keane. Keane and Sharp. That's what Manchester United have got to be, really. Well, Edge Hill played the ball. We saw Edge Hill, Richard Edge Hill's debut on Sky Sports against Wimbledon. Here's White, set away superbly by Quinn. There's no real support at the moment. He's a bit lucky, David White, that that might stay in for Terry Phelan. That certainly wasn't what was designed. McMahon. In goes Quinn again! It's two! Well, the fortune came earlier in the move. But in the end, it was a fine finish. And I've got so much to thank Terry Phelan for. They really have, Mark. Can it be City's day to get away with a horrendous error from David White to such an extent that they profit with another fine header from Niall Quinn? He said it early on the day, provide this lad with service from the right areas and he will trouble any centre half in the country with his ability. He's had two crosses to go and thrive on and he hasn't disappointed with either. Two fine headers. But not great defending from Manchester United, it has to be said. They got caught, whether they come out, whether they drop back in and defend the header, and got it wrong. Time to mark.
Here's Parker. Kamchelskis. Made a good angle for his cross. Well, one player on the pitch who you feel might accomplish a goal from that almost impossible angle was the one who attempted the effort. Well, certainly if there's a player here capable of executing this properly. Probably Mark Hughes would take exception yes, to that. Yeah. <laughs> I, but, I put my apology in there. <laughs> <laughs> but Cantona, we, should, we wouldn't have been surprised at all had that been on target. I think that's what we're trying to say. Two goals here. And now, there goes the arms being raised. Hughes in the centre. Lipcroft and White involved. Quinn now. Well, it all sparked off from Mark Hughes. And now Quinn was on the ground. They really did the Manchester City players take exception to the challenge. And I think what we see now is the lads out for a little bit of their own. And it just escalates from there. But the real damage was when Hughes went into Quinn. That's what upset the City players. And upset David White to such an extent that he's been booked. I think Robbie Hart's finished yet, laying down the law here. I think Mark Hughes is the one who's been called out. Well, he walks a fine line between uh, being the most competitive of forwards. This is a one no reckless. mark. You see Quinn's bodies between him and the ball, and up goes the leg. Down it comes on the thigh, onto the other knee. And it's like, look, David White, look at the view he's got of it. That's what incensed him so much. And I tell you now, Quinn wasn't too happy either. Edge Hill. Quinn moving in with minutes in the middle again. Feeling. Appropriate, really, that the half coming to an end with Manchester City on the attack. They've worked hard on their team play since they got back from Upton Park. And Mark oh, and Hughes is in trouble this Mark time. Hughes is in major trouble here. He's showing a fair amount of understanding. McMahon <laughs> came in ostensibly with eye on the ball. Hughes was bowled over as well. What about the reaction, Andy? Well, I think the picture see it all. McMahon certainly flew in. And to be fair to see, McMahon got the ball. Quinn? That's when we talk about Quinn's get more than just aerial ability, Mark. Aware enough to take that in his chest, turn and hit it in an instant. And only, a good, only a good block stops him getting with a hat trick at the end of the first half. This combination of Kermahan and Fonk, but it's been Niall Quinn's half. Certainly high and mighty on two occasions to put headers past Peter Schmeichel and keep his special run going in derby games. Supplied by Mike Sheeran and by Steve McMahon, United are up against it. But I said to them at half-time, I said, look, you just have to go to keep playing the way you've been doing. Keep your patience, but let's make sure there's no more mistakes at the back. And I said to Eric Canton also, you know, make sure you keep going into areas with the, the final difficulty to pick you up. They decided, because of 2 nothing up, probably, not to go with Eric, whereas in the first half they went with him. And we started dictating. We got a goal from Eric after about 10 minutes of the second half, and we were beat pass back from one of their defenders. And it gave us a lifeline, just gave us a bit of impetus to keep chasing. There trying to banish the European Blues, but so far they're being beaten by the Manchester Blues and by Niall Quinn in particular, who had as good a record as any forward 
in the division against them last season and is relishing the opportunity to take on the league leaders and Joskis. Bruce Quinn gets it defending from the front Parker again though Mark you see Manchester City are happy to let them have it there and then put pressure on the ball when we get to these sort of areas Keane oh, get a bit nearer to the danger area and to force a corner just wonder whether Brian Horton might feel that his team are just easing off a little perhaps Alec Erdogan's gesture there suggests that he feels it sharp to take the corner 2-0 is terrific. If it's suddenly 2-1, then we really do have a game and United could see an escape route. Cantona. Well, it's turning into the game of headers at goal. But the ones from Manchester City are going into the goal. Pallisters over the top of Coates crossbar. It's a lovely ball in from Cantona. Frenchman picked the area, played it in there, head on it, go on, go and head me for a goal. Super cross, but Pallister couldn't keep it down. Oh, it's a mistake by Vonk. It's Cantona closing in. Manchester United are back in it. A suicidal moment for City. 2 1. Well, it's. Decisions and mistakes like that, they just totally change things. Not a problem for the majority of this game. And Michel Vaughan presents that type of chance to a man of Cantona's ability. I don't think anyone in the ground thought this was going anywhere else other than in the back of the net. And suddenly now, one more error, and they can end up losing a game. They haven't looked like they anything but winning for about the 20th minute. Robbie Hart has to step in again. No sure it is. He's keeping control without excessive use of the card, the referee. I hope that turns out to be a good policy for him. Kernahan. Here comes the key. Suddenly, did we see the signs in the conceding of that earlier corner when they just backed off perhaps a little too deep? Well, Gary Palace has had two excellent chances. Maybe not by centre half standard. The people will target that he was with marker and maybe the man responsible. He had a great chance there. He put his own name on the score sheet. Sharp going on against Edge Hill. Well played by Coton. Hughes could have been missed out then, so that Cantona, who was coming in from deeper, would have had the chance. But United really buzzing now. Cantona oh, uh, ridding their heads of the European hangover. Is it football wonderful? Yeah. Well, it's so composed and confident as they ran off at half-time City. Now, total transformation, a horrendous error from Michel Vaughan. And now the confidence is surging back into United bodies. But I offer the opinion that City fans will not be surprised at what's happened because they are such a mercurial club, Manchester City. Just when they have built you up, down the years they've let their fans down. And it was uh, an individual error, a sad mistake by the Dutchman Vonk. So there's put Manchester United back in it through the Frenchman Cantona. They haven't had the ball, City. It's as simple as that in the second half. Manchester United have dominated possession. Here they come again with Irwin. Now Keane. Look at the room he's got. It deflected off Kernahan. And suddenly Tony Coton is a busy goalkeeper. I was just thinking how troubled he was in 
the first 45 minutes. He's had more work to do in the opening 10 of the second half than he did in the whole of the first. And they're in behind City in that right back area again. Showed a little bit too much hit to Vaughn there. It's unlike Sharp. an indirect result of the back pass rule. Defenders now are so much in the habit of heading the ball back to their goalkeeper. Oh, it was there to be it was there to be completed the header quite comfortably. I just think it made a hash of it. Cantona. That's a questionable throw. Determination that City need back throughout their ranks. It came from Bob. Sure, he had plenty of room in which to express himself in the first half. He's done it again here, inviting Edgehill to move on. And on, and on. It would have been a corner, but for the flag being up for offside. That's more like it. That's the best way to win this game, not a... Oh, dear, dear, dear. Michael had seen the decision, Phelan hadn't. Well, I think just looking at the physical bills, I know who my money would have been on, but knowing Terry Phelan, I'm not so sure. <laughs> For the most part, the football has predominated. There have been flashpoints. Maybe more to come. Would you not expect that in a derby? There is no love lost between the two sets of fans and for 90 minutes here, the two sets of players. Richard. Bruce has got to get there for United. Quinn was poised. Cantona. He's got it back. Plenty of options on the right-hand side. Kanchelskis. Parker. City for the moment have very little answer. He... And it needed to be helped out of harm's way by Curl as Cantona came in. But again, somebody puts a quality cross into the box. That just shows the difficulty there is in dealing with it. Coming it back where it came from. Sharp. Pallister. Left by Bonk. Kanchelskis. And now Keane. Oh, it's very difficult to defend. It wasn't the goalkeepers. For all the uh, sprawling motion by Tony Coton. Well, Manchester United could have gone in with just. 10 men in the game. It looks as though they've come out with 12. Pallister! Well, Cantona, who's been in the news for the wrong reasons, reminding us of uh, why it's been such a treat to have him in the English game. Not the City fans will see it that way. We talked about it, it looks like they've come out with an extra man, Manchester United. I just wonder if they've come out with a free in there from their manager. I don't think Ferdy would have been too happy about that opening 45 minutes. Bruce, team. Colin's is furious with his players, the only one 
that went in and committed himself into the six-yard box off a cross of that quality. No well, use putting a quality ball like that in if you get no players going in after it. And Chelsea's. A lot of work for Kernan in particular to do at the moment. Bruce. Cantona. The spare man is Irwin. And now it's Sharp. Ince attacking it again. And this time he didn't lack company because Mark Hughes was moving in. Any sort of touch and it would have flown inside the post and beyond it. Paul Ince here just had a little go at Eric Cantona saying, what are you doing 20 yards outside the penalty area? When you're flashing crosses across the goal like this, I mean, that's what. It's about a foot away from the far post. But you can see Mark Hughes had no chance of getting on the end of it. Too much pace on it. Kahn trying to reimpose himself in the middle of the field. Here's Sheeran. Feeling. Parker watching him. Sheeran keeping the ball. Oh, that was lucky for Manchester City. And they've had a bit of luck from time to time. Sheeran. Trying to spray the pass wide and Thickcroft did very well to use that as chest control that thudded into his body. Well, if this had gone in, I would have been down betting on City for the league, even though they are 16th at the moment. <laughs> that would have been just for too much for him to handle. It's looking at a long last 25 minutes for Manchester City. Protection of this 2 1 lead. 2 0 at half time, gifting a goal to Cantona early in the second half. Keane. Here's Bruce. Flickcroft. That's the type of ball that David White loves. Didn't quite run for him. Quinn with the shot. He got his hat trick from that position. Manchester United might have given up the ghost. <laughs> I mean, he's worth trying. You have two goals you've scored yourself. It drops you 25 yards out. Certainly don't blame Niall Quinn for trying. Bruce. has reached the three-quarter mark. What a learning process it is for Richard Edgehill. <laughs> Flick cross pass for Phelan. Covered by Kamchowskis. Well played, and Kamchowskis. Had he gone to sleep there, feeling as in. So good discipline. Quinn by the near post. Alistair right alongside him. United have pulled everyone back. Sheeran to take the corner. Edgehill. Drops for Phelan. Right, Quinn is still in the middle, but the majority... Manchester City had pulled out quickly of the penalty area to get back to the halfway line, and just as well that they've done. Kanchelskis put away by Keane. Is he in for the equaliser here? Tony Coton gives a very positive answer for Manchester City. The answer is no. Well, that's the saving of match, without a doubt. My first reaction is Kanchelskis is offside. I really thought that, but once he's away, it's all about him against the goalkeeper. He looks to slide it in, and that's a wonderful save from Tony Cotton. He had to be at his best in this situation. He stays up as long as he can, doesn't commit himself too early. That's the crucial part of it, and he's able to make an excellent save. Mom. Now Quinn, Edgehill to the right. White wants it slipped through, just like that. And Schmeichel has emulated Cotton's heroics. Well, maybe that was saving the match. Both goalkeepers showing us in the space of a minute the real quality. White can tie the game up here for City. Can Chelsea opt for accuracy? White was opting for power. 
pushing by Bonk. Cantona coming very, very deep. Slid forward by Pallister. Hughes. Now Keen. He's getting plenty of the ball, Eric Cantona, but he's dropped deeper and deeper as the second half has gone on to get involved. I mean, I think it's great to see him in possession in areas like this, and he can pass it about. But look, if you're a Manchester United fan, I think you'd far rather see him up against their back four and doing his tricks and working his little space. Well, I suppose he will feel that there are others who are going into those areas. Whether they're the right players, of course, remains to be seen. Again, it's almost as if he's got a baton in his hand and he's conducting the orchestra. Giggs, oh, it's a super ball, and Cantona is there where it matters. Two for him, two for United, 2-2 two -two is the score. Well, there you go, if you stay in midfield, you can't get goals like that. One goes into the penalty area. And that's a better sight if you're a Manchester United fan. Eric Cantona in there where it hurts. But watch Giggs here. All he does, he knows where the danger area is. He helps it in there. And there's that gap between goalkeeper and defence again. That's ever so difficult to defend. And Cantona, well, you don't expect them to miss them, do you? Anything now Quinn can do, Cantona says I can do as well. And Ryan Giggs arrives in style with a super setup for him. Well, it already has been a marvellous comeback from Manchester United. Whether to go on and win this now, I mean, what a choker it would be for City fans. What about his City go up to it? Oh. It's... Irwin. Sharp always the option on the outside. Still sharp. Curls header. Sharp again. Cantona's there. Giggs. Just needed a bit of fine tuning that time. Not much either. Very close. away from the right-hand side to give variety to United's play. It's behind Hughes. Cantona. They really are hanging on now, Manchester City, aren't they? Cannot come too soon, but having said that, maybe one flash of inspiration in the other half. It's almost as if uh, there's been a wind blowing the ball into this half of the pitch. I don't think there's an awful lot City can do about it, Martin. I don't think that. It's a case of hang on and hope that United don't get another goal. at the end of the game. Not counting on that 2-0 lead being enough. We certainly wouldn't have enjoyed the second half, that's for sure. This really has been a, a, a Jekyll and Hyde performance from them. So composed and so confident the first half and so very edgy. 
whether they lack belief that they could actually win the game or whether we've not given United enough credit for their really spirited and quality comeback. Well, that sharp, delightfully delivered. For Owen, it's Hughes! And coming in behind him was Roy Keane. Here's the comeback complete. United believe it is. Their supporters absolutely thrilled by a sensational second half showing. Well, I said if this little young right back doesn't get some protection, they're going to get exposed. Again, it's Erwin and Sharp that combine. Hughes takes all the bullets, takes the players away, and Keane comes on. Roy Keane special, late into the box, meets it absolutely perfectly. And he slides it into the far corner. What a comeback. That, I'm sure, the final answer as to whether Wednesday night was going to hurt Manchester United more than ever. What a reply. Absolute agony for Manchester City. But they were hanging on, and the threads just broke. That's a good thing. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Could be nothing else but a booking for Keith Kill. Show of frustration. Well, Robbie Hart would have expected some rough and tumble between the two sets of players. They haven't had much criticism this year at Manchester United, but Alec Ferguson has had to deal with it after what happened in Istanbul. But Manchester United have provided an answer that they can enjoy for a long, long time here on their own patch. A quite amazing victory. Roy Keane provided it after Peter Schmeichel had been beaten twice in the first half by Niall Quinn Headers. Then two goals from Eric Cantona. You can look at a turning point, the error by Michel Vogt. Humbled in Europe, but still the masters in their own area and in their own league. In the end, it's a derby day to save for, save for Manchester United. Suffering for Manchester City and Howe at Main Road. And what a baptism for Brian Horton in this kind of rivalry. The league table offers no consolation either. Michel Vaughan goes off, aware of his part in the second half slump for City. City stuck in the bottom seven. United's lead restored to 11 points. And the trauma of Turkey thrust aside. <laughs>